So that's what Taos for Tears is doing in a nutshell. There's a whole lot more going on there, but I just, uh, we don't have so much time in the minute, in the day. <laughs> so praise God. We appreciate the faithfulness. So as we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> I, I wanted you to uh, know that if you have any questions about the Holy Spirit, something that you've been, been bugging you or something, and you know you read a scripture and it just strikes you one way, and you, you see churches do this or that, and you wonder, you know, is this right or wrong? I don't mind you asking those questions, and if you can, you know, get get in touch with me, ask those questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you know, something that uh, my friend Tom back there and I did from the time we first got saved. Uh, we got saved relatively around the same time, and we started going to the same church, didn't know each other, and then we started meeting each other at the church. One of the things we always did is talk about Bible questions. I mean, everything from dinosaurs to aliens. So, what's the Bible say about those things? Amen? So, uh, you know, all kinds of questions. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, healing, uh, resurrection from the raising from the dead is Jesus God. Yeah. Amen. All kinds of questions. So you know, we, we studied and learned and uh, had our books and stuff. So we we did it, and then the Lord sends me off to Arima. Graduated there out of Oklahoma. Hallelujah. Amen. And so praise God. If you have a question about the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, that is actually a question. Some people don't even know that he's a person. They think he's just some kind of spirit force or something crazy like that. Folks, I like Star Wars, but the Holy Spirit's a person. <laughs> he ain't some spirit force. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so let's open up a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for your truth. I thank you that you speak to us. Oh, Lord, we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, the ecclesia. And we thank you for your name and your glory and your presence here. And Holy Spirit, though I'm teaching, you are the teacher. You teach us. You teach us as, as, as words are being said and spoken. You're speaking to us in our heart that we would know everything we need to know. We have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. So thank you, teacher of our heart, teacher of our, 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 our life. And we thank you for it. Teach us. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, that's one some people say, well, I got the, I don't need to have a teacher or a pastor. Well, why Bible Bible say God gave gifts to men and one of them being a pastor. If you were to be a teacher, if you wasn't supposed to be taught, so another another gift is to be a teacher. Why would God send a gift that was a teacher if you weren't supposed to have someone teach you? Because they mistake the scripture that says that the Holy Spirit inside you teaches you. And he's the, and that's the point. They don't understand it. It's not properly uh, discerning the word of truth. God sent teachers their gift. <clears throat> but even the teachers, including me as a pastor and even you as a person, God is teaching you. Amen. Everybody say, God teaches me. So he teaches you in the spirit. So it doesn't negate the teachers and pastors. It just means that the one who teaches us is the one who teaches the pastor and teachers too. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit <clears throat> teaching us. Amen. All right. Now, last week I started talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, which is subsequent to salvation. And the importance of that, we hopefully, hopefully I'll, I'll get to that part, like as to some of the why, why you want to pray in tongues. But um, record? No, no, let's see. I thought I read the record. <laughs> Amen. Because we want to get to that. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm recording tongues. And uh, <laughs> uh, we, we want to. Understand that the the baptism of the Holy Spirit is subsequent to salvation, and I went over that. I'm not going to go over all that again, uh, um, because John 20 talks about when Jesus said, "Breathe on them," and said, "Receive the Holy Spirit." That's when the apostles got saved. Then we were talking about Acts chapter two. That was the first place where the Holy Spirit was poured out on on all flesh. Amen. And 
hit, hit, hit Jerusalem like a bomb, amen? It was just loud, and everybody around the area just comes swarming to where that great noise was. And then, three, and then they, they were hearing them pray in tongues. We talked about all that last week. If you want to catch up on that, why don't you go ahead and go to Montgomery Faith Fellowship's YouTube channel and uh, look it up and, and watch. Uh, I, did, I did put it in. So the, the teachings that we've been teaching are on that, just the teaching part. Uh, then, uh, so we were talking about that last week. Now, that was the first instance in which when the baptism of the Holy Spirit fell, that people began to speak in tongues. And we've been talking about here that if, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence of praying in tongues should be uh, the... Uh, the sign. That's when you know it. And um, sometimes it's a walk of faith. In my own experience, you know, for a little bit there, it felt like I was just copying what the preacher said or how it sounded. And, uh, but I knew it was in the scripture. <clears throat> and this is the way you got to do faith in anything, really. Some people think they you know, that, that being baptized in the Holy Spirit is just some spiritual thing. Well, it is, but it's received by faith. Everybody say faith. 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 Amen. You receive it by faith, just like you got saved by faith. Amen. And how many know that, you, you know, I didn't experience this complete, you know, release of all kinds of pressures and all that when I got saved. Uh, what, what happened to me was I had to get into my Bible and start reading it on a regular daily basis. I remember, and, and, and coming from a, the attitude that I don't like to read, <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was quite a, that was quite a feat for me. Uh, and I would at least, I'd devour the Bible. I'd come home from school and devour the Bible, chapter, chapter after chapter, amen? Just read it, just raw, because I knew nothing. <laughs> we weren't a religious church family. Uh, we weren't against Christianity. Uh, if we were going to be anything, it would be Christian. But the bottom line is, we weren't anything. <laughs> we were sinners that just, you know, had some some sense of decency, but not enough knowledge of truth, and didn't have any knowledge. But I, you know, I, but I cracked open my Bible that I was given to me. It was an easy read Bible, so I read it and I devoured it. I mean, it was like I never ate anything spiritually in my entire life, because really I had it, and um, just devoured it, and it just stayed with me, and it's still my meditation, it's still my consumption, amen, and, and you got to stay in the Word, that was inspired by the Holy Spirit, so, uh, you know, when I, so, that's when I started knowing, and when my mind was getting washed by the Word, that's when I started knowing that, you know what, I really am a different person. Something really did happen. Well, the same thing happened with the Holy Spirit. I, you know, I didn't have this great feeling when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. In fact, my pastor said to me, just copy what I'm saying. And so I did. And I knew it was in the Bible. I read enough of Scripture to know that the Bible says that you're supposed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and, you're, and the evidence was tongues. So I was a ba da da sa da da ba ba ba, you know, like a sheep, ba ba. I was just being sheepish. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> baying, baying in the Lord, amen. I kind of, kind of did it naturally. I mean, like, oh, that? You did it naturally? Oh, yeah. No, like Brother Hagin said, you sometimes start out natural and end up in the supernatural. Amen. So, you know, I, I did it naturally. But I did it in faith. I knew what the scripture said. It said that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues. Didn't know what that was. I mean, the Bible is very clear in, in 1 Corinthians 13, that is to speak the tongues of men and of angels. Well, I don't know what all the language angels speak, but I can, I've, I've spoken it, don't know it, but I have. I'm sure some of you have been praying for years in the Holy Spirit. You've spoken uh, the language of angels and didn't even know it. I don't think Paul lied there in 1 Corinthians 13, do you? No. Amen. So I believe we speak in tongues of men and angels. Amen. So, yeah, that's part of the reason it's unknown to some of us. Amen. I mean, like I said, I mean, there's still languages out there in the earth I don't know. I mean, they're just. I mean, I guess we got a much better grip on it nowadays. But you know, there's so many languages out there 
that I think maybe 30 percent what the ones that even have written language only about maybe 30 percent actually have a translation of the Bible I mean you realize how many languages out there There's tons of them and 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 they don't all have Bibles still go to the 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 uh, the, the Bible Museum there in DC they have that one floor there and I was amazed at how many empty Bible spaces, languages that they said, here are languages, but we don't have a translation yet. The, the body of Christ is still working to translate the Bible in every language. It's still a thing. It's not just back in 1611, all right? I mean, this is still a thing. There are so many people out there who need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, but, you know, I, and I did it by faith. And so I just was sheepish, doing my sheepish. And then one day, it really clicked in me. It connected. It clicked. Uh, I, you know, I, I knew I was praying by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just me copying what my pastor did and what other people did. Because, you know, when I first heard it, I thought these people were sort of crazy. And even today, if I'm talking about the back then, the Holy Spirit, like even in prison, we were talking. I was talking about it uh, last Thursday night. We were teaching the guys, and could you do it for us right here? Eh, I don't want to be a show, you know. Not. And I didn't, I, you know, because I just, you know, that was kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> but you know, people are all interested in this. They, 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 there's so much that we don't know, and yet there's so much we do know. And if we follow the unction of the Holy Spirit, we'll always know whatever we need to know. Amen. And so we were talking about Acts 2 last week, because we ended with Acts 2. And uh, we're going to be Acts right now. Let's go to Acts. But we're going to go to another chapter, the Acts 10. Now, just so you know, this is 10 years after the church had been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Gentiles weren't even <clears throat> brought into the church at this time. There was 10 years. Where even the Gentiles, they hadn't really, the church had not expanded that far. So you can see that this is a very pivotal point in church history. Amen. See, I have a German descent. I have a little bit of English and Irish in me. And that would be Gentile. <laughs> it wasn't Jew. All right? And, and, and if, if, I hadn't, if they hadn't expanded and did what Jesus said, do go into all the world and preach the gospel, the uttermost parts, I mean, none of us be saved. Think about it, the goodness of God and how much he loves us. And so, you know, here we are at this place, this pivotal moment in the church where um, Gentiles are being brought in. So let's, let's pick that up. And I'll be in the 10th chapter. And you all there yet? Okay. And we're going to be at the end of that chapter, 44th verse. So if you go to chapter 11 and go back a few verses, you'll see it. You'll be right there. It says, now that's 10 years. Remember, just remember, Acts chapter 10 is 10 years of the church, the ecclesia. Okay? Ecclesia is the Greek word in which we translate the English word church. While Peter was still speaking to these words, speaking these words, the Holy <coughs> Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, he had, a, he had a group, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Think about this was they were ten years preaching primarily to Jews, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that was the first place in the Bible where we, we hear the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit was tongues. 
And uh, now here we have 10 years down the road, praying tongues 10 years, preaching to the Jews 10 years, and now they're astonished that these Gentiles are now speaking in tongues. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. You see, when you pray in tongues, it magnifies God. Whether you understand it or not, you're still magnifying God. Uh, when in Acts 2, I told you, shared with you my thought on that, that it, when they heard the, the, the 120 praying in tongues and they heard them in their own language, it wasn't because they were speaking necessarily in their language. It was a miracle of hearing that whatever they were saying, and it could have been language. It could be. I won't put it beyond that. I mean, it could very well have been. But how is it that you used to have 120 people, okay, and you hear clearly in your own native language the works of God being magnified? So it was really, I think, a, a working of, of, of miracle and, and their hearing. Whatever they were saying, they heard in their ears, and this happened here before. Uh, uh, one, the, my, Pastor Bob, my father-in-law, my, my wife's saying piano is sitting as you know, and her dad and mom, they both started this church. And one of the times when I first came here in the 90s, we had a lady from Romania. And dad, I think it was a Wednesday night or a Sunday night, and he was praying in tongues, and she comes up and says, when, where'd you learn Romanian? Well, no Romanian. Was I was speaking of Romanian. <laughs> yeah, I heard it clearly. She, she heard. As far as dad and mom and all of us go, we, we were just hearing sheep <laughs> you know? But she heard Romanian. So, I mean, it happens, okay? Hallelujah. It happens. And, um, you know, so they heard him speak in tongues. What was the evidence? What was the proof? What was the bona fide reason that they knew they were saved and filled with the Holy Spirit? They spoke in tongues. They spoke in tongues and magnified God. And, Peter, and Paul says in Corinthians 14 that when you give thanks in an unknown tongue, you give thanks well. So if you ever really want to fully express your thanksgiving, pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit in you will help you thank God right. Amen. You may not understand exactly how you thank in Him, specifically how you thank in Him, but there will be on the sense on the inside, unless the Lord gives you an interpretation, which is possible uh, if you seek it, 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 you know, that, yeah, I'm, I'm really pouring out my heart to the Lord, and the Lord is pleased. He's receiving what it is out of my spirit that is being given to Him. And then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water? So they hadn't been water baptized, so they were saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and hadn't been water baptized. That these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And then they asked him to stay a few days. So they just end up having a revival and sharing and teaching. And, 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 and they started a house church. Amen. Praise God. We were at a house church last night. It was wonderful. And so, um, you know, that was the second time where the Bible was very clear that when the, the Holy Spirit was poured out, when it fell upon the people, when he fell upon the people, the people spoke with tongues twice now. Let's go for a third here. Amen? Three is a charm. First, uh, Acts uh, chapter 19. So I'm, I'm showing from Scripture. You see, now if I didn't have Scripture for what I was saying, then you'd have every reason to question me. And you still can question me. I don't care. You can question me all you want. Just, you know, take what I say or don't. That's up to you. The Holy Spirit's your teacher. If you listen to him, you'll learn whatever the Lord needs you to learn. Amen? But my Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, what is it, 14, no, 2 Corinthians 13, 1. That let every word be established as two or three witnesses. So I'm giving you a third witness. Amen? The first one was Acts 2. The second one we just read, Acts 10. Now let's hear, here's the third one, the fourth verse. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized you with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people, 
that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, some people mistaken that as saying you got to baptize in the name of Jesus only. That's not what happened. They were baptized in the name of the Father already. Because who do you think John the Baptist baptized him? These people were following God to the best of their knowledge. And up to, up to this point, they had been baptized under John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, baptism. Okay? So they had only been baptized in the name of the Father. This was even before Jesus was revealed through John the Baptist. Now they're being baptized in the name of Jesus. Because you have to include Jesus in the new covenant. There is no new covenant without Jesus. So you're not saved without Jesus. There's, there's, there's no salvation, there's no other name whereby man should be saved, save the name of the Lord Jesus. So we've got to be saved with Jesus. Amen? They were baptized in the name of the Father, now they're baptized in the name of Jesus. But remember what Jesus taught us. Go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right? So now they've been baptized already in the name of the Father. Now they're being baptized in the name of Jesus. They're being dumped in water and lifted up. The, 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 the long and short of water baptism is you died with Christ and was buried with him. And then in his resur when he was resurrected, you come up out of the water, you're resurrected. And we also know through Ephesians 2 that we're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. In other words, I'm at God's right hand. And so are all believers. I'm at God's right hand. If Jesus is the head and I'm his body, then where do you think his body is? Is it somewhere or not on the throne somehow? You separate the head from the body, you've killed it. <laughs> you've killed someone. So if Jesus the head is on the right hand of God, the body is on the right hand of God. So that's where I'm at. That's where you're at. Just following scripture. And so now, they, okay, and then, so they got baptized in the name of Christ Jesus. And then they heard this. And they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. And uh, he was... We'll just stop right there. Okay. So here you see how these people got baptized in the name of the Father, but they got it in separate, they got it in segments. <laughs> First segment, they got baptized in the Father with John's baptism. Now they just got baptized in water with Jesus in his name. And then they, then they got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and what did they do? Spoke in tongues. So that's the third. Straightforward, pretty obvious witness in Scripture that when someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, it should not be altogether surprising if they speak in tongues. In fact, they should speak in tongues. Because the only evidence I see in Scripture that is offered. Some say, wait, 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 what, what about these, these other chapters and verses? Okay, well, let's go look at these other ones. Did you know there are other ones? All right, let's go back to Acts 9. Again, I establish everything like the scripture teaches on two or three witnesses. Now I've given you three witnesses. Let's talk about these here because some people mistakenly think that uh, because it doesn't directly mention that they spoke with tongues as far as they read in the English translation, uh, that, that, you know, this is proof that not everybody baptized in the Holy Spirit speaks in tongues. I've heard almost every argument. I've, I mean, I've not... I've not heard anything different yet at this point. I've heard a lot. <clears throat> but I've not heard anything different yet. So here, based on the same argument, let's go to uh, Acts 9. You're there? All right, now, you know, uh, Paul gets converted. God sends Ananias to this Christian killer. And uh, now he's born again. And he's going to, of course, eventually suffer for the kingdom of God, and he does, we all know. 
But Ananias comes to him and says, Brother Saul, we'll start the 15th verse. Now, listen to me. If he calls him Brother Saul, what is, is, is Saul a Christian at this point? Okay. I mean, I don't, you're not my brother in the Lord unless you're my brother in the Lord. You know what I mean? All right. I know some people like to call, call each other brother. That's fine. But there's two types of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. That's the only two types. Okay? And um, he's calling him brother. That right there indicates that Saul at this point has been born again. Has been born again. The 15th verse says, But the Lord said to him, uh, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized, so he hadn't even been water baptized. <laughs> so when he had received food, he was strengthened, and then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. So instead of killing them he go, and arresting them, he goes there and worships Jesus with them. Okay. He says, and remember here in the uh, 17th verse, who appeared to you on the road has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now there's no evidence here anywhere that Paul spoke in tongues, is there? There's no mention of it. Does that mean he didn't speak in tongues? Well, let's hold your place there. Just skip over to 1 Corinthians 14. And uh, we'll be looking at the 22nd. Oh, no. Yeah, 18th verse. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Okay? So, it is perfectly acceptable to understand, given the other three witnesses, that when he received the Holy Spirit at this time, he spoke in tongues because... We know he did speak in tongues. In fact, he challenged, it seemed like to me, the church of Corinth saying, I speak in tongues more than you all. He might have been from Texas, you know. Down south somewhere. So, you know, uh, the, the bottom line is, when did he start to speak in tongues? Well, based on the scriptures we've already recovered, he spoke in tongues right then. It was, it's not a stretch, it's not even a challenge, in my estimation, or problem, problematic about when he spoke in tongues. He probably spoke in tongues right then and there, and it just didn't mention it, that's all. But how do you know he was filled with the Holy Spirit? Something had to signal that he was. So, I think based on Scripture, he spoke in tongues. Well, now, let's go back to Acts 8 now. So that's why I told you to hold your finger there, because we're coming back. Now I'm going to be, this is going to be reading a little bit here. All right. Uh, we'll be in the fourth verse. Okay, so here we have a, a great revival. Amen. Or not, re actually, these are getting people saved. Revival for the church. One of the things we pray about is the church get consecrated before God. You want revival? Quit praying for revival. 
Just stop it. Because they ain't God ain't going to do it. Unless we get consecrated and get to seeking Him. I mean, seriously pursuing Him. It ain't happening. It's not just going to happen. Every revival, every revival I've ever studied, or learned, it, the people were searching God in prayer, fasting, they were consecrated. It wasn't a thing to be in church for over uh, two, three hours. Prayer, praise, worship, preaching. It wasn't a thing. Why? Because they got consecrated. There was nothing more important to them except Jesus and his word. You see, you want revival? God's waiting on us. But pray for revival. Get on your knees and seek the Lord as a group. Ah, you can't just do it at home. You really can't even bring it. You what you can bring is a seeking heart, a hungry heart, a thirsty heart for the things of God. Consecrate. Show up. You know, we're open early. Show up and while they're practicing, just pray. You see, it's only when, it's only when the church gets consecrated. In other words, and, and, and my walk with God doesn't end the minute I walk out those doors in the front or the back or wherever. My consecration to God, I go home and I'm doing something for the Lord. Amen? I'm, I'm studying scriptures. I'm, I'm seeking the Lord. I'm praying to the Lord. And until we do that, there's no revival. Everything I see in Scripture, nothing, nothing replaces people being consecrated, wholly dedicated, and, and, and it's not just while they're in church. It's while they're at home seeking Almighty God. You want revival? That's how you get it. it it's not, I mean, some people, when they pray for revival, it's not even scriptural a lot of times. They, they, they pray. Oh, Lord, send revival. God's saying, get on your knees and pray. Seek me. Know me. Better men. <laughs> Out of the puppets. Christmas carol puppets. Muppets. 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 The spirit of Christmas present. Big, jolly, red-headed guy. Says, Come and see. Uh, know me, better men. <laughs> How's it go? Come in and know me better, man. Ah, come in and know me better, man. <laughs> Amen. It's a great movie. It's old and it's good. It's one of the best Christmas carol versions I've ever seen. And that's what the thing is. Revival? I'm going to tell you. I've studied it. I'm telling you. It's when people get consecrated to God and they do it outside of church. They do it in church and they carry it on outside of church. Not even getting people saved. Although we should do that. Amen. Go out and get people saved. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Revival is because people are dead. They they're 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 in a critical condition spiritually. Okay? And what do you gotta do? You got to start working on them, right? Right away. You doctors, you nurses, you 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 medical people, you know what I'm talking about. You gotta get on it. And you gotta work hard and you you know, sometimes it can take a while to get somebody revived. And then after the revive, then it's got a healing process. You you what do you get the same thing spiritually? You gotta get at it with your heart. And the revival will come. God will pour out his spirit when we're in unity, and he'll do it when we get together. And you don't have these little personal revivals. I mean, you may have a good rejoicing session, amen. And you may get stirred up, and you'll have to get stirred up. But we, you know, when people talk about revival, we think about groups of people getting stirred up, right? That's what we think of, right? That's what we, revival means you're dead and you need to get stirred up. <laughs> amen. So get stirred up, and when you come here, God will give you a revival because you, your heart will be pulling on it, and God's going to give it. Everything's done by faith. That's how you do it by faith. That's how you have revival by faith. You seek God. You get consecrated. You put you let you let the Holy Spirit, this person that I'm talking about, let him stir you up and you get stirred up with him. You'll have revival, folks. That's all God needs is people 
coming and being together consecrated, holy before God. And the Holy Spirit will answer us. Amen. Just like he did in Acts. He's the same God as he's always been. And God always waits for us to seek him first. Amen. And what Jesus says, Matthew 6, right? Seek first the kingdom of God. This is something you all know, but this is this is something that, that, you know, if we don't practice, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Everything I see in Scripture points to this. Now, all right, Acts chapter 8, fourth verse. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Remember, they got persecuted, and they that persecution stirred them up and spread them out. And so as a result of that persecution, the gospel flourished more. So they, they were like, let's get out of Dodge here and start. And then wherever they went, because Jesus was in their heart, they started sharing Jesus. That's what we do, brothers. That's what we do. Amen. Yet for those who were scattered, went everywhere preaching the word. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. In order to preach the Messiah to them. That's what that word means. Christ it means Messiah. And the multitude with one accord. If I say one accord. You see, that's that's key for revival. We get we all in one accord get consecrated for God. And in this say the same thing here, these people were getting saved in one accord. And the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the multitude the miracles which he did, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out as many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in that city. If you ever want to know what the work of an evangelist is, right there is what you see. So if you just come to a, a, a meeting where the only thing that happens is somebody preaches Jesus and exhorts people to get saved, and that's pretty much the beginning and end of the message, that's not evangelism. I mean, it's exhortation. People get born again, that's great. Evangelism, there's signs, wonders, miracles accompanying that. It's 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 reaching now, it's not only reaching people with salvation, but it's it's healing bodies, it's it's raising dead, it's 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 doing miracles and signs. That's evangelism. That is what the office of an evangelist, and we all know Philip as the evangelist, right? Philip the evangelist, that's what the Bible calls him. So that's what evangelists do. But there was a certain man called Simon, and who previously practiced sorcery. So I guess he got saved, huh? In the city, or he was still there. And that's what the thing, he was still there. And he practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. You know, when you start hearing that kind of stuff, even from Christian ministers, watch out. You understand Jesus is no bigger in me than he is in you? Amen. So we're one that way. Now, there are those who yield to the Lord better than the other person, but that's, that's all personal. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. So this has been ingrained here. But when they believed Philip as he preached in things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized, and then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. You understand, you know, it's good to be amazed at the miracles and signs and wonders of God, but if your life is not changed, if you don't start walking in faith, none of that needs anything. Did my battery go? Yeah, my battery went. Hang on. Hallelujah. I'll just put this down and grab me the extra mic, okay? Amen. The extra mic. Hallelujah. So, so you know, uh, he, you can be amazed. You know, signs and wonders and miracles is no sign that a person's spiritual, though, by the way. 
spirituality, as, as my wife's been teaching, is walking in the fruits of the Spirit, not the gifts of the Spirit. That's not spiritual. That's God doing His will. Now, signs of were made, done, and it says, Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive what? The person, the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. So, were these people saved? Did they have Jesus in their heart? They were even baptized in the name of Jesus. So they probably, a lot of them were probably baptized in John's baptism too. So they were baptized in the name of Jesus. They got born again. Now they're getting prayed for to be filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, for he had fallen on none of them. So if you think you get the Holy Spirit in the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you got born again, think again. The scripture does not support that approach. And this this Acts chapter 8 proves this. And it's all the other chapters too that we read prove this. So it's, an, it's a subsequent. It's something that those who want to get consecrated for God will seek and receive and practice once they have received. And if you're sitting here and you're, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you haven't been praying in tongues much, step it up. Step it up. You've got to pray more. It's part of that consecration. You, you, you pray in the Holy Spirit, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be more holy. <laughs> you're, going to have more, you're going to have more consecration. The more you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost, so I encourage you to step up your Holy Spirit praying. Those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Those who aren't even filled with the Holy Spirit, get filled. Amen. And it says, and, and, and here, look, and Simon saw, so he saw something. Something gave him an indication, of, in addition to all the signs and wonders, you know, that, that, that happened. He had already seen those things, and yet he didn't know that the Holy Spirit was poured out on him because he hadn't been. Not like what the apostles brought when they came there to Samaria and laid hands on him. And he saw, Simon saw, so he can understand he was natural thinking here, that through the laying on a, of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. So something indicated to him that this guy, these people were filled with the Holy Spirit. So he offered them money. So it was so revealing and so he could see it. Now he's wanting to pay for it. Okay? Now he's wanting to buy it. I want to buy this power when people praying. And I believe what it was was praying in tongues. He heard them pray in tongues. <clears throat> and he says, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So he totally has the wrong concept because it's only for those who get born again. You understand? You're not going to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit without being born again first. Okay? But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you because you have no thought because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. Now the Greek there can be translated. And I'm not stretching this at all. You look it up yourself. You can find the Greek. You get yourself a good strong concordance. You can, get a, you can study Greek. I can easily translate that and say matter of speaking. And it's not at all doing anything to the Greek wrong. It's not misquoting it, not misusing it. It's, it. it's in step with what that word is used in Greek. So, I, so, so Peter says, you, you have neither part nor portion of this matter of speaking. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. So he wasn't even saved, really. Or he wasn't, I mean, you can't have a heart that's not right before God. I mean, if he was saved, it was barely saved, and it still wasn't right. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps 
the thought of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness bound by iniquity. Probably had unforgiveness. Nothing will make you bitter and not forgiving everyone and everything and everybody for what they've done to you. You will be a bitter, bitter person. It spoils everything. And he said he was poisoned in it. He, didn't, he had bitterness. He was angry. He was, he was upset. He was mad at something. Someone, probably. He was poisoned. got to let it go, folks. Forgive and let it go. But, be that as it may, Peter said to him, you don't have any part of this matter of speaking. So what was it that he saw that indicated to him that when he laid hands on them, people, they were filled and had the power of the Holy Spirit? I would surmise, and I don't think it's at all stretching this, that he heard them speak in tongues, even though it doesn't directly say something natural struck a chord in him that said there's a power available that wasn't there before until they laid hands on him and they had some kind of signal, something, some kind of evidence. I'll tell you, I believe that, that they, he heard him speak in tongues. So I believe we have five witnesses in the Bible here that show that when someone gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is evidenced by speaking in tongues, speaking in unknown tongues, speaking in tongues of men and of angels. And that's what we need to do. And we need to do a whole lot more of it. You're not going to navigate this world without it. Let me tell you, you don't know. But like we opened up in Scripture, the Spirit knows, and He knows the mind of God, too. So if you will pray in the Holy Spirit, if you will put effort in praying in the Holy Spirit, let me tell you, lives will be spared. People's bodies will be delivered. You will be stirred up to righteousness. You will, 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 will have an awareness, and we'll be talking about that next week. Why do we want to pray in tongues? Why do you want to do that? Amen? But I think it's very clear in Scripture. I think you can see. You're all intelligent people. Amen? Hallelujah. That, that, uh, that the Scripture is pretty sound on the subject of the evidence of praying in tongues as being... The, the sign, the outward sign, the signal that even Simon saw that somebody was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Why don't we... Uh, let's stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.